on this computer. Okay. Ooh. And I will share the screen. Did, did everyone get a notice that says this meeting is being recorded? Yes. yes. This is the first time I've heard that. It's the yes, first time I did it. Continue to get it. Yeah, that's cool. It, yeah. it, it, it warned you. Fear warning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, gave me an, it gave me an option to yeah. leave the meeting up to continue. So I press continue. Oh, yeah. okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the action. first time it happened. I yeah. That's, that's cool. Like Minister Sober said. Think it's, yeah. <laughs> I think it's asking, you know, our permission if we want, we, it's acknowledging if you want to be recording, that you're recording, yeah. right, and if, right. we, if we're giving you permission to record us, or we have the option of leaving the meeting. Right. Yeah, right. But, he yeah, says, but this is the first time so, it has happened, Minister Sandra, and the meeting right. has been recorded before. So, right. hey, Minister Pinky, you learned something new today. You sure <laughs> did. So I, think, sure I, I think Zoom, I think Zoom may have updated their, um, I their think platform. So. They did. Yeah. I yeah. think so. Yeah. yeah, they they did. My phone this morning came on also and told me they were gonna update and install new stuff. So I guess Zoom did the same. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. they've been. Oh they yeah. Do. Well, good morning, everyone. We are controlling. I'm sorry, we're not controlling because we're gonna read about that, learn about it. But Drain James is addressed, James is addressing an issue of controlling the tongue. And he's address, addressing this issue because they had problems with the tongue back then. And if they had problems with the tongue in the time when James was writing mm -hmm. this, we got problems today because yes, nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. Okay? Yeah. So therefore, we have to learn the lessons, if we're wise, of yesteryear mm -hmm. and able to take us to where we're going to go. Otherwise, we may be causing a hindrance to where God wants to take us. A uh, key verse from last week, James chapter one, um, so James chapter three, <laughs> verse one, New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. I'm just mm -hmm. going over. Somebody had a question? No, okay. no. Okay. I'm just going over the scriptures from last week, and we're going to go right into today's scripture text. James chapter 3, verse 2, New Living Translation. Indeed, we all make mistakes, for, we could con for if we could control our tongues, we should be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. And we covered that last week. Now... Getting to today's scripture, James chapter 3, and we're going to be covering verse 3 to 5. Here begins the reading of God's holy word, King James Version. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Verse 4. Behold, also the ships. Which thought they be so great, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. That same verse in the New Living Translation, verse 3. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, verse 4. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong, verse 5. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Thus far, the scriptures. Now we're going to get into those things that control. So James brought up bit, 
rudder, tongue, and spark. What does bit, rudder, tongue, spark have in common? Are all small, very effective controllers. You ever see those big cruise ships of yesteryear? Yeah. Huge ships, but this little thing's turning it. A huge horse. You ever see those big Clydesdale horses from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't beautiful. Know, Louis, yeah, beautiful horse. Huge, massive. Yeah. And this little thing in their mouth the makes bit. them turn. Mm -hmm. The tongue. We'll get to the tongue in a minute. Okay. A spark. You ever light a match and you got a little spark? Yes, sir. It can control, it can make a huge forest fire. Okay. So all of those things are all small, all small, but very effective controllers. Each directs something much larger than themselves. Okay. So James is giving us a perspective on our tongue. Okay. It's very small. It's used to form words. Okay. But it can control our future. It can control where we're going. It can control what people think of us. Okay. So he's bringing, he's letting you know about the tongue by bringing in these other things that control. James is building a case for the damaging power of our words. Now, I got to say this, um, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So there is a positive side to this. And there's a negative side. At the moment, James is bringing out the negative side, the destructive side. Okay. And I'm sure if we're honest with ourselves, we can all look back over our lives and saw that our tongue was used for destruction and caused some harm and ruined some things for us, okay? And we'll get into that a little bit more in a little while. So James is building a case for the damaging power of our words. And this is shown in history dictators such as Adolf Hitler, Ayatollah Khomeini, and Joseph Stalin and Saddam Hussein used their words to mobilize people to destroy others, okay? And I would dare say the last president we had uh, also used his tongue to stir up some strife. Yes. Okay? I'm trying to always bring this into today on what's going on for application. Yes. So we just don't see this as some teaching from James of years ago, that we yeah. see this as what is needed today, right now. You don't need it to come back at any time. So, oh, I know what I forgot to do. <laughs> Going forward, if you want to talk, please unmute yourself. The next part is shown in church splits, okay? Church splits. You got a faction, they want it their way, another way, and then next thing you know, what should be in unity is torn apart. The next thing, the ruining of a pastor's reputation, because somebody didn't like what was said or done, and instead of you know giving it to God and leaving it there and let God deal with it, they decided to take the control and their tongue and they ran with it, okay? So what James is, the point James is bringing up is this is very real in our lives. And he's given us uh, historical events, history to prove his point, okay? Kind of like the minister on Sunday. He proved his point by the actions of the people, okay? We see how verbal abuse in the home can destroy the very personhood and character of spouses and children, okay? So this, this is, you have ver verbally, some people are verbally abusive, okay? And it's destructive. And you have a lot of spouses, whether husband or wife, or children suffering the effects. And the person probably sometimes thinks they're justified. You got to be careful of that. A 
a little bit more on verses three to five. Satan uses the, now James makes a definitive statement. Satan uses the tongue to divide people and put them against one another. Okay. And I'm sure we've been in situations where maybe we were part of it, or maybe we witnessed that. Idle words are damaging because they quickly spread destruction. Okay. And sometimes we say things without all of the proper information. Sometimes we say things based on the wrong motivation. For instance, I could be tired and grumpy. Don't talk to my wife and kids. And say something mean-spirited to them and all they wanted was to spend time. Or they had a concern that they wanted to address. So, and that would be a situation where my tongue caused a whole bunch of destruction. When it wasn't the intent, but because I was under the, didn't have all of the information and was influenced by tiredness. Anybody ever been influenced by tiredness to respond to something? Anybody Amen. ever Amen. been? Yes. Anybody ever been influenced by hunger and you responded? Okay. And if you only waited like another 10 minutes to get some food in your stomach, then the response would have been a whole lot different. So we got to be careful on the motivation of our response. And I leave you with this, the word halt, H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. H-A-L-T, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Be careful when you're in that mode on how you talk, okay? Next point, we dare not be careless with our words thinking that we can apologize later because even when we do, the damage remains. You know, unlike Satan, who tells you something but does not tell you the consequences, God tells you the consequences, what's going to happen, and James is pointing it out point blank. We dare not be careless with our words thinking that we can apologize, some things you just, you may, you may feel you can apologize later, but you know, there's some things that the apology doesn't have any substance, okay? Because even when we do, the damage remains. It, it's like taking a hammer, I'm sorry. It, it's like cooking something on your stove and it boils over. And whatever was in there stained that um, oven, uh, the stovetop surface, that stovetop surface will never be the same, mm -hmm. all because of an action that has taken place. Yeah. Okay. Can Go I ahead. Add, uh -huh. You know, and, and just to, to put it like in perspective, words paint pictures in your head. And once that picture is painted in your head, that picture remains. And it could be 20 years, 30 years, that picture is still in your head of what was painted. So that's why it is hard um, to, to tell people, oh, get over it. Um, because how do they get over that picture that's been painted? So that's the reason we have to be so, so careful what we say to people and how we say it to people because you can't take it back. And I think I said that last week, once the words are said and it's out your mouth, there is no pulling it back. It, it, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you can't get it back. So true, so true. I, I at work, and this is real event that happened, just became a supervisor I really didn't know how to deal with certain things. So I reverted back to how I deal with certain things. I tell you, I give you a, a directive and I expect it done. And I really don't watch my thoughts. I don't really don't 
watch the actions that come about from those thoughts. And I'm still paying for it 10 years later, believe it or not. So as Minister Sober said, they paint a picture. So a lot of people now have a picture of me that may be outdated, but they're holding on to it, which is, that's what they can do. That's yeah. what people do. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, here's you know, another he's... aspect of this. I'll get to your question in a minute. Just let me put this out there. Here's another aspect of this. We as Christians do not want anything said of us to turn people away from Christ. That's right. So we as Christians have to be all the more careful because people will use any, now if they're using an excuse that has no credence, that's one thing. But if they're using a reason that has some substance to us, that's quite another thing. And we as Christians have to be careful that we allow God, as we went through last week, because God is capable of controlling the words that come out of our mouth and how God is capable of how people receive those words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody had a question or comment. Go ahead. Oh, uh, Minister Pankey, I was just sharing that one minister was preaching one time and he said, your words are like a, a pillow of feathers. Once you open it in the wind, you never get back all of those feathers. Yes. Yeah. So true. So true. Thank you for that. Thank you for all your comments so far. Next point. A few words spoken in anger can destroy a relationship that took years, years to build. Yes. Okay. And I'm sure we all got, if we haven't mm -hmm. witnessed it or seen it, we were it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we live some life. And if you haven't, continue to live. You'll be there. Remember that words are like fire. They can neither control nor reverse the damage they do. Okay? So and if you want to see how fire is, just look out in California. Okay, mm -hmm. They got a person can have a little match and unfortunately be careless with that little match. And next thing you know, you got hundreds of acres of land being destroyed and people's homes being destroyed. So it's important that we catch the vision that James is trying to throw our way. Mm -hmm. Catch the vision that James is trying to hard to get us to accept. Because you want to know something, even with this teaching, a lot of people won't accept that their words are like fire. <laughs> a lot of people won't accept that their words uh, can cause damage. No, because you know what? Because they're so self-centered that everything revolves around them. Yeah. And it's the other person. Okay? So we got to be careful of those people. Okay? Because they're self-centered. Mm -hmm. Okay? Any questions or comments on verse 3 to 5? Okay? Those little things that control and can cause huge, huge animal, huge ship, huge fights, okay? Huge destruction is the point that James is striving to bring out, okay? If there be no questions or comments on verse three to five, we'll move on to verse six. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. James chapter three, verse six, King James Version. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among your members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. The New Living Translation says that verse this way. The tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it, it is set on fire by hell itself. Wow. 
there's one thing I can truly say. All of us on this call, call, Zoom call, that I can hear you has a tongue. Mm -hmm. And yep. all of those who you can hear them speak, they have a tongue. <laughs> so therefore, everyone who you can hear speak has a tongue, can set things on fire. Be careful. Yes. You don't want to set a fire in nobody else. <clears throat> and we know that there are some people out there that want to set a fire in you. Mm -hmm. And when I mean set a fire, your destruction. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is something, this isn't, this. you want to know something? This is not a lesson for somebody else. That's right. This is a lesson for, for me. me. For right me. now yes for me okay because as much as i love my wife and care for her and take care i can come in in a mood that would kill that love in a minute mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what jane and more importantly you can turn somebody off to christ in a minute yes because yes. you are a representative. Hmm. So James is, is the teaching is for the physical, our relationships, and this teaching is for the spiritual, yeah. our relationship with God and how to, we can build people up in Christ or we can tear people down in Christ. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more in verse six, the tongue, okay? The tongue. Now, some people may accept this. Some people may say, not me. But if scripture tells you this, I would be inclined to agree with scripture. Amen. Because scripture is the final word on man's humanity, mm -hmm. existence, Mm -hmm. doings okay and if you should be of a mind not none of y'all i know but i gotta practice every once in a while for those who may be not a christian yet or may have other viewpoints if you should think that this don't apply to you examine your life mm -hmm. if you're not a christian mm -hmm. okay? so the tongue is full of wickedness Mm -hmm. because of the damage it can cause in the world and bring to the rest of the Christian community. My God. The tongue can turn one's life into a blazing flame of destruction. Mm -hmm. The tongue can destroy all the good that we've built up over a lifetime. Think about, think about, our public officials on all they get the track record helping people doing things in congress doing things wherever and then they have that moment when they're kind of relaxed they think think of it this way i i know a couple of years i don't remember who the people were but a couple of years ago when trump was either running or in president and he had a meeting with a bunch of his friends and they were not guarded but somebody had a recorder and you got insight into what they really were thinking yes and it could take you down okay mm -hmm. because you, you you're a hypocrite you're saying one thing but underneath something else mm -hmm. okay all because of your tongue, not being on guard, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, ministries, ministries mm -hmm. destroyed because of words, people. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, we people put out words. Yes. And this world is full of people, okay? So this applies to us here and now. Next point. While we have ministered for years and years and seen abundant fruit, if we fail to control the tongue, we can undo all the good we have built up 
in our years of ministry. Because far too, you know, one of the things that we, well, I was so good in this and this, so I should get a pass. That pass don't, don't count here. Because James is giving you a warning. And I truly believe that we're doing this lesson to prepare us for what's coming. And God is, is instilling within us the mm -hmm. proper belief of our tongue so that we will have the proper behavior, first and foremost, to glorify our God. Amen. And to Amen. build up people around us. Yes. Okay. Next point. Our speech has a power that few other skills possess, for our tongue can be set on fire by hell itself. Mm -hmm. We got to realize, let the situation be right with Peter. He was with Jesus. Situation, he lifted, he was in tune with God, in tune with Jesus walking, the situation changed when he was out there with those strength, with those people who were not like him. And boy, did his speech change. Don't think your speech can't change just because you the Christian and you've been walking with God for a long time. Yeah. You still got that sinful nature inside of you. Yeah. Okay. And if we don't think words have power, how did God create all that there is? Scripture tells us he just spoke. Yeah, by words. Okay, mm -hmm. by words. Okay, so our words have power. Okay. Uh, next point. Flames of hate, prejudice, slander, jealousy, and envy seem mm -hmm. to come from the very lake of fire where Satan will be punished. Uh, when I when I was preparing the lesson and, and going over that, I was thinking all of this thing of hate and and here, here here's one thing specific. Unfortunately, they had that black area. I think it was in Louisiana. Somebody may know exactly, and they were wiped out over a lie. And they think they called the area Black Wall Street. Oh, and. <laughs> Some of go ahead. But wasn't that, wasn't that Oklahoma? Wasn't that Tulsa? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you. I knew somebody would have it. Yeah. So, go ahead. No, I no, I was just saying Oklahoma. That was right. Uh, Oklahoma. Thank you. Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's it. Right. And the rage that caused a certain group. Mm -hmm to rise up against another certain group mm -hmm. and basically wipe them out oh. over something that, I, if I got it right, was a lie to begin with. Yes. And, and how did that start? Because of words. Yeah. How well, did well, that start? It's ahead. always the lies, Yankee. It's always the lies that cause the trouble. And yeah. Tulsa is is one thing. Emmett Till is another. Um, even what we're faced with right now to, uh, in this day and age, with with what's going on with 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 people of color being being attacked, it's always a lie. It's always lie. Being a lie. And mm -hmm. and the thing about the lie is that the, the 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 devil hates us so much. He's so jealous of us. Mm -hmm. And if people could only get that in their head, yes. That the, devil is so jealous of you that he he, he puts these things and he, 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 these situations and these mm -hmm. thoughts and you need to control that you have to say you know and i'm talking about christians i'm not talking about people yeah. who don't know better i'm talking about christians you have to put your stake in the ground and says you know what this is not a god you have to use the word of god as your barometer and mm -hmm. say no, I can't just open up my mouth and say any old thing. This is not That's a God. Right. We need to, to measure ourselves with what we know. And we know it. Mm -hmm. But the enemy always comes in and he tries to throw you off. And he is there celebrating when you go running like a crazy person, opening up your mouth and saying anything. So true. Yeah, so true. And, and that's when 
that's when we give in to his deceptive practices. Mm -hmm. That's when we give in. And like you, uh, Minister Sober said, the word of God is to be the guiding, the guidance of our lives. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the enemy and situations and that inner sinful nature wants to come in and tell you, you don't have to believe the word of God in this situation. You can doubt it. You can deviate from it to meet your own need. It's okay. God's all right with it. And, and sometimes we buy into that. Mm -hmm. and, and it starts a flame that we wish never got started. Yes. For the destruction that it brings on us. Mm -hmm. Anybody else with a comment or question? Yes. Um, yeah. <coughs> Mr. Punky, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying that the tongue is an unruly member of the family and it, of the body, and it is so small, yet, mm. you know, it can cause such a rift in family mm -hmm. yes. and the church and everything. Mm -hmm. yes. Therefore, we must endeavor to keep this small member under mm. control. control. Yes. yes, a small member, but has to keep it under control of yeah. the body. And, and yeah. as you were saying that one of the words, mm -hmm. one of the ways we mm -hmm. men can keep it under control, walk away. Mm. Yes. Sometimes it's right. better you say nothing. Right. Sometimes Amen. it's better you just walk away until you can get that godly perspective back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Minister, and then, Minister, Minister Panky. Um, Go ahead, Minister Pike. A comment. You know, I mean, as I as I'm listening to you teaching, and if the if, if we as Christians have so much difficulty with the tongue, mm. <laughs> think of the man that is ungenerated. Does that know Jesus? Mm. 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 Yeah, that's true. Does, that's does true. Think about True, we might true, look at true. them and say what, what they are doing, the eight and all the rest of things. But if we, <laughs> if, if yes. we are having so much problem, because <laughs> somehow, some way, every one of us, every living Christian mm. in the world at large, have top trouble with the small member. But as I was focusing on the tongue, you cannot even see him <laughs> unless you purposely. Oh, yes. to see him. Mm. <laughs> so true, and that's a good point. At Minister Pike, I just want to piggyback on what you just said. And the reason you can't see it is to talk about the hidden things in our lives. It's yeah. the hidden things in our lives <laughs> right. that get us in trouble. It's not the things that are out there that get no, us in trouble. It's, in our it's the <laughs> hidden things in yes. our lives. Yes. Amen. Amen. You are so right mm. about what, what I pointed up mm. when I talked about Christians because you know if we are having this problem, problem. Mm. You, you're so right. What about the man, the man out there who is, who mm. is uh, 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 um, you know, who has not come into the light? They're still in darkness. Yes. And the the thing about this 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 tongue thing, and, and, I, and this is going to be my last comment. I promise you. The no. thing about this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yes, um, is that when that fire is set, mm. you cannot, uh, uh, you know, you think about when a fire burns or scorches and I like coming, I'm coming from a place having been burned myself, yes. second mm. and third degree burns over 12% mm. of my body. So wow. I'm coming from that point. The scars are left. You can't, they, they do surgery. They do cosmetic surgery, mm. they do everything, but you still have, have the scars, scars. so you can't, you can't take it mm. back you can't fix it because the damage has been you may rebuild a house but you've lost all the precious memories that mm. were in the mm -hmm. house mm -hmm. you have a brand new house and it's beautiful but you you keep looking for the precious that that photo of the baby mm. and that's the so that's why I bring it up, and and, and yeah. Minister Pike, you just you solidified it, and I think my Holy Spirit gave me goosebumps. If you see me, I'm so animated right now. It's the hidden things in our lives that yes. get us in yes. trouble, true, and as true, Christians, so we need to start not covering up stuff, but bringing mm -hmm. it out, out so that 
God, yeah. the Holy Spirit could deal with and, it in our lives. Yeah. We're yeah. running Amen. around so fake and phony, and we have all of this hidden stuff, yeah. and Amen. we're dressing it up. We're coming Ooh. to church, we're worshiping, yes. we're doing this, we're doing Amen. that, and the Holy Spirit Amen. cannot Amen. deal with it because we have Ooh. not bring it, brought it out. Yeah, true. Amen. We have to bring it under control. Yes. For the Lord, mm -hmm. under control. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. That is a true, that is very true. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know where that would start with? It start with two things. Mm -hmm. It starts with a decision of our will. Mm -hmm. And it would yeah. start with, Lord, show me what's inside. Mm -hmm. uh, because far too often, I don't want to see what's inside. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I don't want you talking to me about me. Mm -hmm. Just to be honest. Another okay. honest point okay. Minister Pike brought up is if, if James is addressing this to the Christians, wow. imagine the people in the world. Yes. And with the as we and here's some wisdom for us Christians. Mm -hmm. As people in the world don't expect that same standard that you live by to come mm -hmm. forth from them. Amen. If you find it, great. Mm -hmm. But remember, they're not regenerated into the things of God. They don't mm -hmm. have, they, they, they may have a resemblance mm -hmm. of the things of God, but deep yeah. down, they still ruled by that sinful nature. Mm -hmm. And that sinful nature will pop up and it'll take you by surprise. So when we're mm -hmm. dealing with the world, we need to be extra, if you can be so, extra on guard. Because yes, they're not playing by the, our rule, the God's rules. Sorry. Go ahead, Corey. And, and as, you, as you make that point, that's why I find it so, so interesting that, that as Christians, we, we have to be on guard and be so careful the, the counsel that we take from, yes. from them that are in the world because the, the, wor <laughs> the words that, they, they, that they're going to be using, you know, James is speaking as, as what is the source? What is the source of the, of the counsel that comes forth? Is it, is it, is it godly counsel? I, 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 I doubt it if it's not coming from, you know, somebody that, that has been reformed. Yes. Amen. So true. Now, there are some counsel that we can receive from those in the world, but we as Christians better take it to God and make sure, God, is this what you have for me to apply yeah. Yeah. in this time of Amen. my life? Otherwise, you take you take counsel from the world. You're going to get what the world gets, destruction. Exactly. destruction. Mm. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions <laughs> or comments? My goodness. This is okay. so powerful. Yeah. Let, let us remember, we all have a tongue. Mm. Every single person that you can hear you has a tongue. A tongue. Oh. The tongue makes yeah. words in our mouth. Mm -hmm. and, and even the people who are mute, if you see them when they're angry and, mm. and they're trying to speak when they're angry, you can tell that they're angry words that they're saying. Yeah. They do it sign language or whatever, and it's angry words, you can tell it. So they may not be able to vocalize it, but it's coming. It's still there. Yeah, it's still there. It's can I still say there. something? And yes, go ahead. Just to jump in, thank God for what everyone is saying. I remember someone saying to me, believe the energy that you feel. And we know it's not just an energy, it's a, it's a spirit that mm -hmm. emanates from a person. So it's very true what's being said. Because when you encounter somebody, even mm -hmm. if you walk in a room, you can sense whether something is correct or something is off. Mm -hmm. So it's it's also uh, as a result of perhaps some things that were said because words are containers mm -hmm. and they, they're carriers. Yeah. And, and we have to be careful what we allow ourselves to speak through this small member because our spirit infuses those words and it makes it alive. So it could be for the good or it could be for the not so good. Yeah. And at the moment, James is bringing out the negative. He'll get to the positive in a little while. I don't mm -hmm. want anybody to think we're not balanced. We are balanced, mm -hmm. but we're going in depth on the wickedness and the, the destructive and the negative first. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. So any more questions or comments, we will pick it up. Actually, next week, it's time to pray. Next week, I will announce what we're doing in a little while. Um, as of now, it's uh, nine minutes to 12. In two weeks, we will come back and pick it up from James chapter three, verse seven and eight, continuing about all the points that James is bringing about, about your tongue, mm -hmm. our tongue. Because oh, mm -hmm. I, I want, I'm, I'm making this personal. This ain't, this ain't about Bishop's tongue. This ain't mm -hmm. about um, President Biden's tongue. Mm -hmm. This is about Minister oh, Silver's you. tongue. My tongue. Right. This is about this is your tongue. tongue. Yeah. yeah. My tongue. May, I, okay. may I add something, uh, Minister? Uh -huh. uh, something else in the world of virtual, the virtual world, mm -hmm. the social media word, world, we may not utter words verbally. But I, I have come to understand that even in texting, if you will, we have to be mm -hmm. careful in our words Amen. because in this Amen. modern day, because yeah. as was said earlier with Deaconess Pi um, Pike and ministers, everyone actually, like you said, Minister Pikey, we have to be careful because things we cannot take back. And sometimes words can be misconstrued, especially in a text. And it can do so much damage to yeah. friendships, to family. And, um, and I'm a witness to some things. And that's why I speak that I'm just led to share in this virtual reality that we have, not only in our verbal words, but let us please, well, I'm gonna be very careful going forward in even the texting. And as you said, like this week, this Monday, I, I mean, it wasn't wrong text, but some text I was sending out to maybe several people when I only wanted to one. So there's certain times that if you if retired or whatever, there's certain things that we might not want to do, as was said earlier. But thank God those texts were okay. Mm -hmm. But there have been some texts going back and forth, and we and there was damage done to family and friends. So let's just be careful also. Hey, Sandra, bl blame it on autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Like, some, I, things, I, some things can be blamed on all correct. That is true. To bring some levity to it. Minister Pankey. Go ahead, Deaconess Jalees. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking that um, I think because they said we have free, freedom of speech, mm -hmm. I think they've taken it a little out of context. Mm -hmm. Because yes. we do have freedom of speech, but we don't have freedom to down somebody no. or say something that's out of the ordinary and i don't think you really some people really don't think they say well i have free freedom of speech right so i'm entitled to say whatever i want but that is not true correct and we listen to james and i think that's why james is reminding us you do have speech but you gotta guard what you say Amen. and guard that tone because everything you're thinking is not to be said Yes. And you need to control it. And so I think true. if we start, to, me, myself, think before I open my mouth, it would be much better. And yes. sometimes you just you say, well, with the media, the media always say, well, we got freedom of speech. We can do this. We can do that. Yeah, you do have freedom of speech, but you don't have the freedom to down somebody and make right. somebody feel less than what they really are. Because once it's like Minister Sober said, you cannot take back what you said. And I think like she was talking about her scars because those scars may go away, but mentally they never yeah. do. And yeah. it's always in your mind. And every time something come up, it just reflects. Your <laughs> mind is, is very delicate and sensitive. So you and, hold yeah. on to those things. Julie, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put <laughs> a little um um point here. And mm -hmm. when you about the scars never going away. And uh, uh, I know I'm getting a little personal here. To mm -hmm. this day, I do not go close to open flames. I will not turn a stove I understand. with open flames. Um, my stove is an electric stove with the, the little element thing, but I will not to this day turn on a regular stove. Mm -hmm. So yes. you're, you're right. It, it's been so many years, but yeah. those things remain. <laughs> because I've never hurt. been burnt, but I don't have candles in my house. I don't even like the really, I don't like fire. 
You understand? And I have mm-hmm. never been burnt, but I'm very aware and leery of it. So you won't find no f- candles lighting and stuff going on here. I don't, a fire scares me. It really, truly does. And I remember my neighbor had a fire and the water was coming down in my closet. But believe it or not, nothing got wet. Mm. I could not believe it. I mean, one of my other church members came here and we could see the water coming. Nothing in my closet got wet. Amen. And I just thought that was amazing. So I don't deal with fire. So I can understand if I was in your position, I would be scared. I really would. That, but that's yeah. just me. <laughs> Minister uh, Frankie, guys, Minister, Minister Frankie, Pike. just a final short word. Mm-hmm. I think as, as, as Christians and the ministry of the word that goes out on airwaves all over the world in our country, more attention need to be placed on the tongue. The tongue. Mm-hmm. We minister on everything else. Except but the, the tongue, tongue, no one pays attention to. The and tongue. it's the most damaging. In other words, Dangerous. most of the days Dangerous. and weeks that we go out to work and come back home. And we begin to assess our Christian mm-hmm. faith through the workplace and through our lives. We have to confess that this little tongue here has caused a lot of trouble out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of trouble. And then we don't even we don't even mm-hmm. spend it. Time is not spent to, to really address the trouble that the secret tongue give, is giving. Mm. Tongue is giving a lot of problems. Minister, yes. Francis, this is truly a powerful study. I, yes. thank problem. I thank you. I thank you. It's truly, it, it, it brings us um, to oh reflection on ourselves and to know mm-hmm. that when we are going to say something, as my mom used to say we, when I was younger, come 10 before you say something. Yeah. And we, 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 you know, it, it, it is so powerful. I truly thank you for thank this study. Truly. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because the tongue can be deadly when you think yes. about it. Sure, I can. <laughs> Two, yeah, two it, points it, it, I want to bring up and then we'll close. First point, those of you who are retired, God bless you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> those Thank of you, us sir. who <laughs> those of us who are still in the workforce. Yes, sir. The point of emails and texts <laughs> is so true. Yeah. And we have to understand that that is an expansion of our tongue. Mm -hmm. and there is a way in email you can tell a person off and they can get the sense of what you're trying to say even if you try and cover it up then they've done that Mm -hmm. so we got to understand in today's world yes james is speaking about the tongue in our mouths but in today's world yes email text social media and which any level you use it or Mm -hmm. whatever okay, is an expansion of our tongue. And yes. we are to take this same wisdom that James is teaching us yes. and apply it to those areas. Right. Okay, so I, I want to make sure I'm clear that this applies for today and go into today's world and what we're using and say this needs to be applied in emails, this needs to be applied in text. This needs to be applied in whatever social media you're using. Or everyday life, yes, sir. Everyday life, exactly. Yes. Not, not just Monday to Friday <laughs> and Saturday and Sunday, I got different rules. No. Amen. This is every. And the next point I wanted to bring out with so much of a mental stress on us, mm-hmm. okay? Be mindful of people's mentality. Some people mm-hmm. just can't take it. Mm-hmm. And those words you speak may push them over. Yes, that's right. Some people just can't take it, and those words you speak may lead them down the wrong understanding. Amen, amen. So I, I'm trying to the, the teaching from James about the tongue bring it into today your life and my life today. Yes, and see where we're going astray and Mm -hmm. see where we need to be more careful and see where we need to, um, Lord, 
control I, here's one and this don't happen often so i'm not no super whatever i'm telling you that now but i meant to say something to a person which was okay and the lord changed it to totally something else that brought everything into a much brighter yes. light yes but we need to get consistent in that spot and I'm, I may have been the one voicing it as an example, but I, I'm going to be the first to tell you, I'm not consistent in that spot. Because mm. sometimes I want to, Lord, do the right thing by you. And sometimes I want my selfishness to come forth and for mm. you to feel my pain. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Oh, thank okay? you. So we got to be careful when we want a person to feel your pain. Because the words that come off can't bring yes. them back. Oh, and as usual, I owe you about five minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, we will pick it up next week. We are praying. Okay, now I am going to stop. No. Now I am going to stop recording somehow. Uh, pause. Here we go. All right, so now we're on pause. We're no longer recording. I will stop sharing. I think, I think you're still recording. Yeah? yeah it, it is, because mine is recording. Yours is recording. 